Namaste. So, last night in the satsangam, we were talking about sound vibrations and how uh, the swaras or the pitches of the mantras always have to be in tune according to the Vedic scales. And so I was looking up the uh, genesis of speech and sound vibration, and I came across this wonderful passage in Lakshmi Tantra about the glories of Aum, the Pranava. So here it is. It's very profound. With mind fixed on me, one should remain completely pervaded by me. Following the method directed by the preceptor, constantly practice yoga, culminating in the attainment of true knowledge and samadhi. Remaining silent, he should repeat the Tara mantra, Aum, which saves souls from worldly existence a million times. Then I, the absolute I-hood belonging to Vishnu, being pleased, manifest myself in the mind of the adept who has accurate distinctive knowledge of the truth. And that knowledge reveals the absolute identification of myself with God, the state known as Lakshmi Narayana. Such an adept becomes liberated while still alive, Jivan Mukta, sanctifies the world with his glance, and all his mantras, both popular and Vedic, become efficacious. He becomes a master of the Vedas, in all other sciences, in all other yoga systems, and in the knowledge of sacred places. All methods of application of all mantras are, in fact, an application of pranava, aum. The three vyahritis, bhu, bhuvaha, and svaha, emanate from its three letters. The savitri gayatri, the all-purifying mantra, emanated from its feet. From Savitri's feet emanate the three Vedas, Rik, Yajas, and Saman. Thus, all speech, both secular and Vedic, consists only of the Pranava. As the tiny seed of the Banyan tree contains the germ of the whole big tree, so the entire world of speech is ever contained in Pranava, Aung. Aung is the primary great bija, the primary source sound, Shabda Brahman, the supreme presence and the purest and highest tattva, principle, Mahat. There's so much here. We could probably just do a whole series on these five shlokas, actually ten shlokas in the original. First of all, she says, one should be completely pervaded by her. What does that mean? It means to realize that everything, including all that we call myself, with a lowercase s, is actually the goddess. The body, the mind, even consciousness, what to speak of the environment and the things around us, are all her. There really is no such thing as an individual self. And the best way to realize this is to see how everything that we identify with in this world is actually her. It's coming from her and it is her. And she is all the tattvas. That means all the material elements, the modes of material nature, consciousness, ego, all psychological phenomena are all 
nothing but her. So she is the creation. She is the goddess, uh, the Shakti, the energy of God. As such, she is not different from God. And so to realize this is the state of Lakshmi Narayana. Nara means beings, and especially human beings. And Ayana means all. So Narayana means all beings huh, are Lakshmi. Lakshmi Narayana. The two become one. And this is the highest yoga. Not that we deny the existence of matter or the material world, but we see how it's not separate from the self, this time with a capital S. <laughs> then she says, when she is pleased, she manifests herself in the mind of the adept. That's the realization I'm talking about. And at this point, one's sadhana consists of nothing but chanting Aum, three transcendental letters. Each one has a long mark over it. That means it is hold, hold for two beats. So it's not Aum, it's not Aum, it's Aum, with the nasal ending on the M. Aum. And this is why the Pranava has a separate letter in the Vedic alphabet, Sanskrit alphabet, and actually all Indian alphabets. Because it's neither Om, nor Aum, nor Am. It's Aum. It's a unique sound. And it's not to be compared with anything else. It's the original Bijam. The Bijam means a seed. And she compares it to the banyan seed. Banyan seed is tiny like a mustard seed. Yet a banyan tree can cover easily a square mile. So, you know, if nobody cuts it, it'll just keep growing and growing. <laughs> it can become a whole jungle all in itself. So this is the origin of the material creation. Aum is the Mahatattva, the highest principle of existence. And all the other tattvas, 24 or 27 or 32 or 36, depending on how you analyze, are derived from it. The Shabda Brahman, the transcendental sound that is the origin of all creation. And oh, there's more. Such an adept who realizes her becomes liberated while in this life. This is called Jivan Mukta. So because she is consciousness, realizing her means there is no more inside and outside, no more subject and object, no more seer and seen. Huh? It is all one. And this is the highest platform of self-realization. So really, at that point, there is nothing else to do but chant Aum. And she talks about Gayatri, the Savitri Gayatri. The link between Aum and the rest of the Gayatri is that the three transcendental letters, A, U, and N, represent the three Vyahritis, the first, uh, first three letters or names in the Savitra Gayatri. Aum, Bhur, Bhuva, Svaha. And these are the three worlds, the earthly, the heavenly, and the absolute. So when we chant Gayatri, we become purified from all material contamination. I highly recommend this as a major sadhana to just take a year, 
Huh? I literally did this when I first came to Tiruvannamalai. The first year or so, more like a year and a half, I just chanted the Gayatri Mantra. I had a mala, huh, beads, uh, made of tulsi, and I chanted it day and night. I mean, literally, from the moment I woke up in the morning until I went to sleep at night. I would chant Gayatri Mantra. And after about two or three months, I got realization. And that was a wonderful experience. Huh? And, uh, but I didn't stop. I kept it up. And the realization just got deeper and stronger, more profound. So I highly recommend. And of course, we have a whole series on chanting the Gayatri Mantra, which you should definitely watch. Then she says that the three Vedas come from these three letters of Aum. So all speech, all meaning, all significance, all knowledge, all mystical powers, all yogas, the Vedas themselves, all come from the Savitri and its origin, the Pranava, Aum. This points up how important these mantras are and how powerful they are. But, as I said, to realize them completely, you have to devote your entire energy and attention to chanting them. This is very important. This is pure devotion because it's not mixed with anything else. So when one does this, she becomes very pleased and she manifests herself to the yogi. This happened to me in 1984. She literally appeared in my room, but not in a physical form, not in a visible form, but in a subtle form, which I could clearly perceive. So this is her mercy. This is her blessing. And she gives this blessing to whoever applies themselves 100% to the process of yoga. And really, any mantra will do, because all Vedic mantras begin and end with Aum. Aum means the source of all, which, of course, is God. So God has two parts the uh, Saguna Brahman, or Shakti, and the Nirguna Brahman, Shiva, or Narayana. The two are equivalent. Uh, it's just that the mode of worship of Lakshmi Narayan emphasizes the Sattva Guna, the mode of goodness, whereas the mode of Shiva Shakti worship is open to all kinds of people. There's no qualification. That's why even demons can approach Shiva and get boons from him. And of course, the Vaishnavas uh, think that's a bad thing, but actually many of these, uh, even demons, become perfectly realized devotees. So this is the great mercy of Shiva. And you are all encouraged to take full shelter of the Pranava, Aum, and the Savitri Gayatri Mantra. And in this way, you can perfect your life. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shaktihi, Aum.